What's up guys, it's Thomas here. Today I'm going to show you how to fix an issue on Safari where it says Safari cannot find the server and will not load your website. Here is what the error looks like. Uh, basically to fix this we'll be going over several methods to isolate the actual issue and then we'll go over multiple fixes so that you can get back to browsing the internet again freely just as you please. So the first thing we need to do is actually isolate the problem. We need to figure out if it's an issue with Safari or your computer versus an issue with their website. So the first thing to look for is, is this issue happening on one or two specific websites or a lot of websites? If it's happening on one or two specific websites, then it's likely an issue with that website. But let's go through a couple steps to make sure that it's an issue with that website and not with your computer. The first thing I recommend trying to do is opening up the page on a different browser on the same device as giving you the issues. If the website loads in a different browser, it's probably just an issue with your Safari and not the actual website. If the website does not load up in Google Chrome, then the next step we're going to want to take is to see if your computer will actually connect to their website. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up Launchpad. Then you're going to navigate to the search bar at the top of the screen and you're going to type in terminal and open up terminal. Then you're going to type in ping space and then the website that you're trying to access. You're going to press enter and then you should start seeing these things that say 64 or another number of bytes from this website. If you're not seeing these, then your computer is not connecting to the website. So if you can't connect on the computer, then try loading the website on a different device. This will let you know if this is just an issue with your computer or the website itself. And if it loads on your other device, then the first thing I recommend you try doing on your computer is disabling your antivirus software. Antivirus may try to prevent you from visiting websites it deems unsafe, but some websites that it thinks are unsafe are actually perfectly safe. If this doesn't work, I suggest turning off your adblock software. The way adblock works is by blocking your computer from accessing certain IP addresses that are known to give ads. It may accidentally be blocking you from accessing the website you want to go on because it thinks it is an ad delivering website. So to do this, you're going to want to navigate to a website that's giving you problems. I'm just going to use google.com for my example since I'm not actually having any problems. And you're going to move your cursor up to where you see the adblock plus or your other ad blocker logo and you're going to click on it and you're going to uncheck enabled on this website or check disable on this website whatever your personal ad blocker says once it's done loading you can try to reload the page and see if it will load up if you're still having issues try force quitting your browser to do this hit the apple logo in the top left corner of your screen then hit force quit click on safari and click force quit and click force quit again. If you're still having issues, try disabling your Mac's built-in firewall. To do this, click the Apple logo, click system preferences, and find security and privacy. It looks like a little house with a keypad. Click on it and click firewall in the top of the little tab. You wanna make sure your firewall is set to off. If it's not, then click the little lock to make changes in the bottom left corner. Authenticate with touch ID or your password and click the turn off firewall button. And then once it's off, you're just gonna click the lock again. If you're still having issues, another common problem is just that your system time and date is set incorrectly. To fix this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the time in the top of your computer screen and you click open date and time preferences. Then you're gonna want to navigate to this little padlock button in the bottom left corner of your screen and you're going to click on it and authenticate using your password or touch ID. Then you're just going to click set date and time automatically. And make sure that your date and time is now set correctly. If you've made it this far into the video, I'd like to please ask you to take a couple seconds to hit the subscribe button. And if you're interested in learning more about technology, hit the bell and choose either all or personalized. Remember, it's free and you can opt out anytime, but I really do appreciate you taking the time to subscribe because it lets me know that you enjoyed my video. Thank you so much, and let's get back to the video. So the next few fixes are all in the same place, the network preferences. But I'll be showing viewers how to get there every time just to accommodate people who are less skilled with technology. So you're going to want to hit the Wi-Fi button, and then you're going to click Open Network Preferences. Then you're going to click on Advanced right here. And you're going to navigate to the DNS tab. 
Now you're going to hit the plus button and add the following IPs. 8.8.8.8 and the final one is 8.8.0.0 and you're just going to hit enter to add them then you can hit the OK button and you're going to hit apply right here. The next fix involves resetting our network preferences you're going to click on the Wi-Fi button in the top of your screen. You're going to hit Open Network Preferences. And then you're going to click on your Wi-Fi, which is right there. And you're going to hit the Minus button. Then you're going to hit the Plus button. And you're going to set the interface as Wi-Fi. And name it whatever you want. And you're going to click on the Create button. Now, as you can see, it says no IP address right now. So you may need to click the Wi-Fi button and reselect your network and then wait a little while for it to connect and turn green. So for the next fix, we're going to remove your Wi-Fi network from your computer and re-add it. To do this is pretty simple. You're going to click the Wi-Fi button in the top of your screen and you're going to open your network preferences again. Now you're going to make sure that what Wi-Fi you're on is checked right here. You're just going to make sure it's blue and you're going to hit advanced. Then you're going to find your Wi-Fi network. I have a few so I'm just going to speed this up. Ah, there it is, Otis. I'm going to select it and I'm going to hit this minus button. And then I am going to hit the OK button in the bottom of my screen. And then I'm going to hit the apply button. And now I need to reconnect to that network. So I'm going to hit the Wi-Fi button in the top of my screen and click on Otis. Now I'm going to type in the password for Otis. And I'm going to hit OK or Enter. And now I'm reconnected to Otis. Which is my Wi-Fi network name in case you're wondering what's Otis. For the next fix, you're going to type in a command in Terminal. The command can be copied and pasted and it will be in the description below. So. So you're going to need to open up your network settings by clicking the Wi-Fi button and clicking Open Network Preferences. And you're going to hit Advanced. And you're going to hit TCP slash IP. Now you're going to navigate to Launchpad, which is the little rocket at the bottom of your screen. And you're going to hit uh, the Other folder. And in there you should see Terminal. If you don't, then you can navigate out of the folder and you can just search for terminal in the search bar at the top of the screen. You're going to open it and type in the following command which as I said before can be copied and pasted from the description. Network setup space dash set v6 off space Wi-Fi and you're going to hit enter. Now the other window we have open, which is the IP tab of the network preferences, next to configure IP, it should now say off. Now in rare circumstances, this creates issues with your computer internet, in which case you can just set it back to automatically in the dropdown. For the next fix, we're going to renew your DHCP lease. To do that, hit the Wi-Fi button at the top of your screen, hit open network preferences, hit advanced and go to the TCIP section right here and click Renew DHCP Lease. Then you're just going to hit OK and you're done. For the next fix, we're just going to disable any bad proxies. To do this, hit the Wi-Fi button, hit the Open Network Preferences, hit the Advanced button, and open the Proxies tab. You just want to make sure none of these are checked, especially the SOX proxy. That one gives issues a lot. And just make sure that none of these are checked. And if any are checked, you're just going to uncheck them and hit OK and then hit Apply. The next issue is quite complicated to fix, but I'm going to go through it very slowly. We're just going to make sure your host file has no problems. So you're going to go to your home screen of your computer or your finder and you're going to click the Go button in the top of your computer and you're going to click Go to Folder. You're going to type in forward slash etc forward slash hosts and click Go or the Enter button on your keyboard. 
Now you're just going to open up your host file by right clicking it, clicking open with and clicking text edit. And I ask you to please pause your video right now just to make sure that it looks exactly the same as mine. If it doesn't, then it's kind of complicated to fix it. You're going to open up your launch pad by hitting the rocket ship. Then you're going to search for terminal and open up terminal. And you are going to type in the following commands. sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash hosts. Hit the enter button and type in your computer password. It will not show you the computer password for security, but you just have to type it in. And if you get it wrong, it will give you two more tries to get it correctly. Once you typed it in, hit enter and you'll see the screen. From here, just use your arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate and fix the text to make sure it looks exactly like mine. The text on mine will be in the description below. When everything's correct, you're going to hit control O to write out the text and you're going to hit enter to finally save your changes. Once you see wrote 12 lines, you can hit control X to exit this tab and you can close out terminal. Now when you open up the host file, it should look exactly like mine. The next few fixes are slightly less common, but they happen. Click the Apple logo and hit about this Mac, then hit software update. You want to make sure that your computer is completely up to date. And if it's not, I recommend updating it. That could be the issue, but is highly unlikely. The next few fixes are for issues directly with your Safari settings. So open up Safari. This current fix is for an issue that appears when you have bad extensions that are hurting your Safari from working properly. So click on the Safari button in the top left of your screen and click on Preferences. Now hit the Extensions tab and you're just going to want to uncheck certain extensions and try to load your website. Be sure to recheck the extension if it doesn't make a difference. This way you can isolate if a certain extension is not letting your website load. Once you find the correct extension, if there is one that's preventing your website from loading, you're going to want to select it and select Uninstall. If presented with a pop-up like I am receiving right now, then you're going to want to click show in finder. Then you're going to want to completely quit out of Safari by closing these two windows and right clicking Safari and clicking quit. Now you're going to click on the extension that's shown in finder, right click it and click on the move to trash button. Now you might need to authenticate with touch ID or your password and it will delete the extension. The next fix is pretty easy. It involves clearing our Safari data. So you're going to open up Safari and you're going to hit the history tab in the toolbar at the top of your screen. You're going to hit clear history, which also clears your website data. And for the time, you're just going to select what time it was before you started getting this issue. So I'm just going to select the last hour and I'm going to click clear history. Now try loading up the website. For the next fix, we're going to clear your Safari caches. Open Safari, click on Safari on the top of your screen, and click on Preferences. Now you're going to click on Advanced and click Show Develop in the menu bar. Just make sure that that box is checked. Now you can close out of this and click Develop in your menu bar. And you're going to click Empty Caches. It's simple as that. I really do hope that at some point in this video I solved your issue. However, if I did not, I do recommend that you go to support.apple.com and chat with an Apple support representative. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you learned something, uh, please do leave a like. Thanks so much for watching and have a nice day.